Today we light the first and second candles of the Advent wreath. Each candle has a meaning. The first candle is hope. The second, second candle is peace. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as a member of one body you were called to peace. Colossians 3.15 Let us pray. Almighty God, you offer rest for our hearts and peace for our souls. Give us grace to seek peace in our lives, peace in this community, and peace in the world. Through Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. All right. Forms, also, just to offer thanks to everyone to be able to make this possible, setting up the altar, preparing the bulletins, lighting the candles, serving, and all those things. It's just that uh, uh, we don't say thanks enough, uh, but we will uh, thank you. So please stand as you're able. Our service is in the board. Mm -hmm. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory, Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Glory to God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way of our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Baruch, take off the garment of your sorrow and affliction, O Jerusalem, and put on forever the beauty of the glory of God. Put on the robe of the righteousness that comes from God. Put on your head the diadem of the glory of the everlasting. For God will show your splendor everywhere under heaven. For God will give you evermore the name, righteous peace, godly glory. Arise, O Jerusalem, stand upon the height, look toward the east, and see your children gathered from west and east at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that God has remembered them. For they went out from you on foot, led away by their enemies, but God will bring them back to you, carried in glory as on a royal throne. For God has ordered that every high mountain and the everlasting hills he made low and the valleys filled up to make level ground so that Israel may walk safely in the glory of God. 
the woods and every fragrant tree have shaded Israel at God's command. For God will lead Israel with joy in the light of his glory with the mercy and righteousness that come from him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> We'll be doing Canticle 16 today, found in your bulletin. We'll read it responsibly by half verse. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior. Born in the house of his son David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies. From the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham. To set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear. Holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my children, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins in the tender compassion of our God the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace <clears throat> glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever You can just read it right there. You're fine. <clears throat> A reading from Philippians chapter 1, verse 3 through 11. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart, for all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Jesus Christ. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So prior to the reading of the gospel and sermon today, on this special day, I've asked Joe to read a short passage. So Joe, you can just read it right where you are. This reading is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 5. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Expand as you're able. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Ateria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah in the wilderness. 
he went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> hope is a message of hope that we have in this season of Advent. Hope of the coming of the kingdom. Hope that God is with us. Hope that God will be for us. Hope that whatever the challenges, the disappointments, the dislocations we may face, the delays, the hurts, the confusions, that there is still hope. Hope for us. Hope in God. Hope coming with the best, the best for us. And we may not see it all today, but we may see it in the day after that or the day after that or in time that we can't even fully predict, but there is hope. And the image of that we find in the message of the prophets and the message of the prophet that I just asked you know, Joe to read, the message of the prophet Isaiah, who is then picked up in the gospel that we have for the second Sunday of Advent. And it's, what will this end time be? What will it mean when the Messiah comes? And the imagery of that is, um, <laughs> you, might, you might say infrastructure. <laughs> you know, infrastructure in the sense that the, the rough places will be made smooth and the, the rugged places will be worked out. And, and in other words, all will see it together. But this is not really about a, a city building project or an interstate building project. So don't look to see the, 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 the biblical orange barrels coming out, so to speak, but rather that making those rough places smooth and making the crooked places straight and making all that available is an image of hope that, if you will, the rough places of our lives, the broken places of our lives are meant to be healed by the coming of the Messiah. And again, as we said in the class this morning, that this coming, as it turns out in Jesus, is not a coming of power. It's not a coming of, you know, some way of force. It's got to force out the bad guys and do all those things. It's rather a coming of a way of love coming of a way of love. And that way is heralded by John the Baptist, and that way is fulfilled in Jesus, who comes not in some kind of military power that's going to put everything to rights and knock out all the bad guys, but rather comes with love for all of us, and love that invites us to a new way of living, a way of concern for others, a way of inclusion, a way of hope. And so that gives us a message. It gives us a path. It gives us a direction that, that calls us back. And as we've said before, that's one of the things that the prophets do, is they call back God's people again and again and again. They get off the track just like you and I get off the track. I mean, every Sunday we're back in here saying the general confession. We've done those things that we ought not to have done. We, you know, so that's okay, though, because we're human. We try to live the best lives that we can. But ultimately, for us in God, there is forgiveness. And for us in God, there's an invitation to come back, to come home, to get back on the track. Because none of us stay perfectly on the track all the time in and of ourselves, that we, we're imperfect creatures, but that God calls us, that God hasn't given up on us, that the covenant, as he said, there's a difference between contract and covenant. And contract, you break your side, I don't have to do my side. But covenant, we both hold on. We both hold on in covenant. And one lets go, the other is still holding on in covenant. So God makes covenant with us. God 
through our baptism, God through God's fidelity with us makes covenant with us. And so if we get it wrong, if we get off the track, God's still holding on. That, that is still there. And what that means for us is that the God who comes into this world in the flesh for love, not for vengeance, not for power, not because he can, but for love, invites us into a way of love that is a way of forgiveness, a way of inclusion, a way of generosity. And so we do our best. We do our best, maybe in small ways, but guess what? The small ways turn out to be big ways. And so if we gather up a little bit of food that we can share with hungry people, or if we bring in <laughs> coats that can be worn by people when it gets cold, I mean, you know, you say when in terms of all the, the mass of poverty or hurt or need in the world, where is that? But really, it does something special. It does something good. And sometimes it can set in place a ripple that this leads to another act. It leads to another act. But for the person who has dinner tonight because of someone's generosity, they don't need any additional justification. They know it. And so for the person who feels warm on a cold day because of a coat that they've received, they don't need any further justification because they just know it. And so we're invited. We're invited to share in a way of love that is coming into our world. And we don't know it yet fully, but what we know is true. Uh, say, now we see through a glass darkly, then face to face. But what we see is the real deal. It's the real love. The real love of God coming to us and for us because of that's who God is. And that's who we are in God, meant to know that love. And the more we share it, the deeper we know it. And the more we can help others to engage it, the more fully we can enjoy it together. And so, as you know, we say, when two or three are there together, there am I, Jesus says, in the midst of them. And so we gather. We gather for church. We gather for service. We gather to celebrate. But when we come together, there's something very powerful in that. That's our advent anyway, our coming in place, our coming together in love. And as Jesus comes into our world, so likewise, we can help the love of Christ continue to be seen, to be revealed, to be reflected. And you know, I remember uh, you know, like at the University of the South, they have this big Advent celebration, an amazing music, and I know there are other celebrations and other places we're getting ready for one here, but what I'm saying is it's celebrating an event that in its beginning may not have seemed that out of the ordinary. I mean, like John the Baptist walks into town. I mean, maybe he looked different, but I mean, he's, it's just a man walks into town and starts talking. Jesus comes into the world, begins his ministry. I mean, yes, there will be uh, there will be pyrotechnics. There will be epiphanies, to be sure. But it's also Jesus comes to a person and, you know, helps them, you know, heals someone, shows compassion, listens, cries when Lazarus has died. In other words, some of these things in and of themselves are simple, straightforward, direct, but still of incredible value. So I'm also saying to you, Never underestimate the importance of your love. Never underestimate the importance of what you do to help, to serve, to share, to include. And as we know it, as we can make it our own, we participate in the fulfillment of the old prophecies and the New Testament gospel, that love does come into our world and love does matter. And despite very challenging circumstances, at times, there is hope. <clears throat> Let's stand as we're able and say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the 
Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified from the conscious power. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge on the baptism and the forgiveness of sins. We look at the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are form two, located in your bulletin. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For our Bishop Michael Curry, for Mark Van Coveren, our Diocesan Bishop, and Father Slocum, our priestly partnership. For this gathering, and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of Him. Pray that they may find and be found by Him. for the departed, especially Byron Ratliff and Orrin Rawlings. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for Jim, Norm, Mabel, Walker, Beverly, Betty, and Janet. We also remember those in armed services, both home and abroad, and all who have suffered as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. We ask our, your prayers for those on our diocesan intercessory prayer list, St. Paul's Church, Newport, the Reverend S. Matthew Young Rector, and the Reverend Deacon Tom Ron. Today in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the bishop, clergy, and laity of the Anglican Church of Burundi. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored, especially Mary Ratliff and Sam Razor, whose birthdays we remember today. Pray that we have, may have grace to glorify Christ in his own in our own day. And now before the concluding collect, I'm going to invite anyone who has prayers that you would like to offer uh, aloud with names, concerns, and do so at this time.
hasten, O oh Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have not done, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. All things come of thee, O Lord. God thy own hand be given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We are to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son, for in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, 
and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. John the Baptist and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the altar of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Let us keep in peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.